All right, I'm late, but the cliffhanger is now over, and it is now time to talk about how to end the scene. So actually, the wait isn't over yet, because I have to remind you that we are running a Kickstarter right now for the comic that is being drawn right now. Uh, there is a link above, and there is a link below. Click them right now if you haven't already. If you have, you're amazing. All right, cliffhanger actually over. Let's Let's do this. So this is basically a continuation of my last video about writing scenes. Um, it In my previous video on scenes, I addressed the following. Scenes have arcs. Scenes are typically about one major idea. Scenes have at least one lace plot type to them. And there are two different types of scenes. There are your action scenes and your reflection scenes. If you need a in-depth refresher, Click the link above right now and you can zoom over and get a quick little refresher before you come back here and watch the ending bit. For such a small part of your scene, it may seem a bit odd to have a video exclusive, exclusively on addressing the end of your scenes, but the truth is the ending of a scene is actually one of those things that new writers have a lot of difficulty with, and a large part of that kind of comes down to not understanding what a scene is in general. The biggest issue that people tend to have with scenes is that instead of ending these scenes, they just kind of stop them at whatever point. Like scenes don't have a set length by any means. Uh, they can be a page long or they can be 50 if you have a very dense scene. I can't imagine it quite in my mind, but you could do it. Typically it's going to lie somewhere in between there, probably like four to five pages, maybe 20. The point that I'm making is that you can't really determine how, when a scene ends based on how big it's getting. Instead, the reasons that a scene ends tend to be due to structural reasons. So what are those reasons? Scenes end after a climax with either a resolution or a hook, and they can also end in a cliffhanger. Usually scenes end with a hook, like that's the most common best practice way to do it. Sometimes it calls for a resolution and sometimes it does call for a cliffhanger. Learning to end scenes on a climax hook combo is sort of the bread and butter of writing scenes that readers want to continue the next scene with. Like they finish one and they're like, oh, well, I can't leave this. I want to figure out what happens. That is your hook climax combo, which is particularly important to those of you writing webtoons and webcomics where you want people to return to your comic after a few days. And you gotta have some good hooks for that. It sounds great, but how do you make a hook? What even is a hook? A hook is very similar to a cliffhanger. Um, the main difference is that a hook provides a glimpse at an upcoming chapter, while a cliffhanger is typically cutting away right before any resolution happens. Cliffhangers should be used on a very rare occasion kind of basis, because they can get frustrating to your reader if things are always ending mid-action. What some may consider cliffhangers um, aren't what I would group as cliffhangers, honestly. I like to separate the idea of a cliffhanger from a hook because I think it's very easily to unintentionally end mid-scene on a cliffhanger um, thinking that you're creating a hook. So I like to use them as two separate categories and a hook is more best practices whereas a cliffhanger is a more sparing thing. I'm gonna just keep saying that. So separating them helps me identify the problem. Consider your scene's arc. Based on how you start a scene, that will give you an idea of how it ends. So let's say we have a location plot, and your scene is your character is faced with a complication, in this case a broken bridge. Uh, they're trying to cross the bridge, it's broken down, if they step on it, it breaks and you leave them dangling on a cliff. That is your cliffhanger, okay? Um, you didn't complete the arc. You're just going to leave them in trouble. A hook is different, right? Let's leave our... Let's leave almost everything the same, but the scene will also have a complete arc to it. So your character reaches a broken bridge. They want to come up with a plan to cross it. So... They make their plan, but despite this, we reach a midpoint where it breaks anyway, and now they are dangling above a cliff. We're still at our midpoint here. So during this midpoint, they notice that there is a monster below, and that's sort of our low point now as they realize that, oh man, if they fall, it's worse than they expected. And 
some evil might be afoot. So they quickly are able to then search their brain and realize a way to escape based on previous stuff they've known. So that's sort of our turning point, moving into a climax, and they're able to reach the top because of this. But right as they are about to pull themselves up, they are met face to face with the Queen of Monsters blocking their ability from reaching the other side. So aside from the added depth we have added to this scene, we've added quite a bit, what differentiates a cliffhanger is that the hook is obviously often a shift in plot type. Hooks are a introduction to a new plot arc entirely. They do not come from within the plot arc because that is completed in the scene. They're often tangential, or completely unrelated, all right? When you end before you even reach the other side, before you even go on sort of a journey, you aren't adding to your story, you're just stopping mid-story. You're stopping mid-scene. Um, I'm not gonna say this can't work, and I, I think I've made that clear. It's often done, in fact, when you're trying to create a sense of speed, speed up your pacing, chopping between scenes quickly, flashing between them to create a sense of urgency and a sense that things are being accomplished. But even weaving in a few hooks will suit will serve you a lot during those um, types of cut betweens too. It just they would happen a lot quicker. Uh, and with all this talk of hooks, it's also good to just end your scene with a resolution too sometimes. Um, it's okay to tie things up with a neat bow. This often leads to a reflective scene or is often the end of a reflective scene, but you can have hooks at the end of them too. And early on, I'd really avoid a lot of resolution because you want to build tension, you want to make things worse, and hooks create that very easily. But resolutions, like cliffhangers, they have their place. Uh, uh, scenes are easier to work with when you understand that they aren't about where you where you cut. They can occur back to back. It's where the arcs end and begin, not where you cut, okay? So hooks are just a preview of the next arc that you're moving on to. So you can cut or you can go straight into our conversation with the Queen of Monsters. All right, it creates a different effect depending on whether you cut or just move in, but there's still two different scenes. And since the first part like can stand on its own, it is definitely still a scene. And in the end, it does take a lot of practice to start understanding how scenes end. And it still gets me from time to time. I sometimes will write something and realize I haven't written the scene out in its entirety. It definitely happens to me when I don't go into a scene knowing where it's supposed to go. But going back on things, it starts to become easier to place. Um, with this as your basis, though, it should get you on the right track. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about hooks later on, so I guess we're doing another cliffhanger here. Or maybe this is a hook, because you didn't come here for hooks, but, but we're going to learn about hooks next. I don't know. Either way, you just need to focus on the fact that... Your hook comes from a different arc than your scene, whereas a cliffhanger is when you just straight up end your scene without reaching the end to it. So like when we reach the Evil Queen, we're moving into a character arc type story now that was not previously addressed. There was foreshadowing to it with the monsters because, you know, that clued us in that there might be some foul play afoot, but it didn't, but it didn't change the arc of the scene which was getting to the other end and you could even like consider if you move on and if you move on from there and adjust where the plot points are you can change what the scene is entirely maybe the scene isn't about crossing the bridge and the crossing the bridge aspect is just rising action but that's very different so as long as there is a arc to where you begin and end you're good and your hook is what comes after your arc and it doesn't have to be in depth and again we're gonna get more into hooks i'm rambling i have a super bad headache that's why i'm really late today i didn't sleep as well as i should and i got a camera so i've just been practicing vlogging i'm gonna do a vlog it's gonna be horrible and uh patrons will get it first so there's a secret um i figure if you're following me to the end of this now that I'm rambling, you'll be much more interested in this. So this is less information about writing. This is more information about me. 
Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing vlog content. I think I'm going to do once a month. Um, at the last day of the month, I'm going to release the month of vloggy vlogness and that will go out to patrons and then next month it will go out to public so patrons one dollar and up can expect that vloggy vlog vlogness and then the rest of you can expect it in august you can learn about our july so there you go man thank you for sticking with me and i love you guys and um, other patron stuff is we're doing the critique group on this weekend, this Saturday. So if you are a patron, make sure to get your stuff in. And if you're not, make sure to become a patron so that you can get three things critiqued by us. It's too late to send in scripts, but we still have room for art to be submitted. All right. Anyways, I'll see you guys Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday is when I'll see you. Goodbye. <laughs>